What is going on dudes and dudettes of the interweb? Thank you so much for clicking. I am AJ and let's get right into this video. Badlands by Halsey has been highly requested and I thought it was about time that I did a reaction to this album. So without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Track numero uno, Castle. I'm heading straight for the castle. Okay, first things first, the production of the song. Okay! Shit! Got me trembling and shit. Oh my god. It sounded so goddamn good, wasn't it? The lyrics. So in the first verse, right, she talks about her frustrations with the negative aspects that come with being a celebrity. She talks about the paparazzi, the flashing lights. She talks about the fabricated stories and she's just pissed. And she mentioned um, being choked up and, but she can't really say anything because of you know what's gonna happen. She's pretty much giving us the tea of what happens in the entertainment world. Who is usually at the top? Who is usually in control? Old men, always. They tell you what to do, oh you can't do that, you can't wear that, you have to act this way, you have to look a certain way, you, ha you know you just have to abide by their rules in order to succeed. So that's pretty much what Miss Halsey is telling us in this song, at least that's what I think. Girl, the beat, ew! Track number two, Hold me down. My demons Ooh. begging me to outfight me. Vigorous and angry, watch them pound. I sold my soul to a three piece. And he told me I am not a one more. This is what I live for. Hold me down. I'm helpless. Clinging to a lip so bit of spot. Got me down on both the knees. But if the devil did me. Girl, you know we gotta talk about the production of the song. The beat, ooh, hold me down, hold me down, yay, yay. Lyrics, I think this is actually a continuation of the first song, Castle. Y'all remember when we talked about the old man at the throne who is pretty much controlling what she has to do in the music industry? This is, another, this is she's talking about the same thing in the first verse. She still talked about holding back. She's not actually, she can't verbalize her thoughts because of the whole control shit. And she said she sold her soul to a three piece. What's a three piece? A suit, bitch, right? Coat, pants, and the, uh, the thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the three piece suit. Yes, I think that's what she's singing about. She sold her soul. Oh, and another control theme because she met, she talked about um, she sold her soul to a three piece and he made her go down on her knees. Pretty much dominance, submissiveness. So she is being submissive to the guy who is controlling the old men at the throne. Mm, girl, I think we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hold me down. Track number three, New Americana. It's just what you expect inside her new revival of the rich and the city's on call. We are the new Americana. Whoa, Lana Del Rey just came to mind. Fuck, 
What song was that? Diana. National Anthem! That's what it is. Yes! Let me play it real quick. One, two, three, go! Right? Yeah! That song reminded me, that little part of um, Halsey's song reminded me of National Anthem by La Lana Del Rey. Bitch. James Dean! I'm gonna need for all of y'all bitches to stop using Queen Mothers and Dude, okay? James Dean belongs to Lana Del Rey, for God's sakes. I just spoke about um, her song reminded me of Lana Del Rey, and she speaks about James Dean. I know it's just a coincidence, but I'm just letting y'all know that Lana Del Rey has been talking about James Dean. <laughs> So besides the fact that this song reminded me of a lot of the Ray track, specifically National Anthem, the lyrics were pretty cool. She talked about how changes have been occurring in the American society. Marijuana used to be illegal at some point. And now, I mean, it's still illegal in certain states, but you can go to other states and smoke that shit and you'd be cool. She also talked about being raised on Biggie and Nirvana. Those are two completely different musical genres. And somehow she was raised on that. That's cool. Damn, that's actually pretty cool because if you go to like certain households, you know, it's usually one type of music or the other. It's not a mesh of those two genres. And like she said, we are the new Americano. What's up? We don't have to be in the Hamptons to feel rich, boo. Mm -mm. Track number four, Drive. That's the sound you hear when you um, get into a car. Is it raining? Is that why the windshield wipers are on? So this is the first song she's singing about a relationship. At least that's what I think. Because she said, California never felt like home until I had you on the open road. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is, they are not expressing how they feel about each other to one another. So all they do is drive, like she said. Can y'all just stop and talk? You know, have a conversation, be like, hey, yo, I'm really feeling you. Is you feeling me? If yes, let's get together. Let's go have lunch or something. Track number five, Roman Holiday. <laughs> Out of all the songs, this one was a lot more chill production wise. It was not as heavy hitting as the other songs were. And I was trying to figure out what the Roman holiday had to do with the song, but I think I have a little bit of an understanding of what it's talking about um you know in the beginning of the song she talked about the issues that were happening in her household for example her father punching the wall so hard that it separated the dining room i don't know how that happens but damn that is some strength girl Man, i would run away too and she also <laughs> talks about um calling somebody uh to you know take her out of that place and just so she can have a peace of mind somewhere else in the company of that person. That's what I got from this song. The Roman holiday part, I don't know what 
you know the association is with this song maybe roman holiday is a title of a song or a book or a show or a movie or some sort and it's used as a reference but i don't really know so yeah track number six colors This song is actually really interesting. In the beginning, she talked about somebody who is only happy when they are high, pretty much. And it seems like this person does not get affection from his family. And towards the end of the song, right, Halsey said that um, this person was red and she was blue. And when they blended together, they became purple, but he was not necessarily feeling the color purple, so he retracted away from the situation. And in the beginning of the song, she uses the colors blue and gray to describe his current state, which is just sad and dull, and he is never happy unless he is high on dope. Damn, that must be a shitty ass life to live. Oof. But somehow she still likes him though. It could be because she was once blue and he was red and he added some color to her life. Maybe I'm just digging way too deep into this song. Anyways, song, interesting, lyrics are, it's something that I would have to listen to again to kind of peel the layers a little bit. Track number seven, Coming Down. Are we back in the car? Ooh. Found God. I found him in the Ooh. Oh shit. In the previous song, she said that um she when she she found religion by laying with him. Is this the same lover you're talking about, girl? I found the devil. Hmm? I found him in a lover. In so so this same love is it the same lover girl? Found God and the devil in the same girl. You know what? Let me just listen. Listen, girl. His lips like tangerines and his color code it speaks. It's coming down, 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 down. It's coming down, down, coming down. In his head beats me in my thighs. I found the savior. <laughs> It's coming down, down, coming down. It's coming down, down, coming down. So I have a feeling that this song and the previous song, Colors, are connected because remember in the previous song she said, I uh, feel religion when I lay next to you. And in this song, she talks about finding uh, God and finding the devil at the same time, a savior. Ooh. Remember when she said she was uh, blue and the guy was red and then they blended together and became purple? So I'm assuming when she said, I found a savior, that was the time when he kind of saved her. Girl, are we putting two and two together? Track number eight, hunting. So at this point, it seems like Halsey is in a relationship with somebody because in the lyrics she says, I have a boyfriend and he is made of gold, which means she actually thinks that this boyfriend of hers is perfect. However, the way the lyrics of the song are written seems like she's actually addressing somebody. And you know what else? The person she's singing to happens to have a partner as well. But somehow she wants this person to taunt her. And she did mention that they had a long and deep history, but somehow they're not together. And there's a reason why they're not. Maybe they're not a good blend, but you know how life is. Break up with somebody, someone toxic, but somehow 
you want to get back with that person because you are drawn by the drama. She also said that um, he was looking at other people. Girl, he ain't for you, boo. Track number nine, Control. They say a way to find a So when I was listening to the song, right, I was like, oh shit, is she talking about schizophrenia? Especially in the first verse, because she said that um, she was sitting alone, but yet she was crying out loud saying that they're coming for her. So when somebody says something like that, you're like, oh shit, or is she talking about the voices in her head? And she did mention that um, her mind is a diseased place. So this song is about addressing a, some sort of mental disorder it's not necessarily schizophrenia. But as the song continues to progress, she lets the listeners know that she is a lot more than this mental illness. She's not changed. She is taking control and, you know, there's no need to pin her down for her mental illness. I think that's what the song is about. <laughs> Track number 10, Young God. I like that auto tune in the back. So I feel like this song is about finally finding a companion she likes and enjoys spending time with and she feels like a young god with this person. However, sonically this was probably my least favorite track because I just wasn't feeling the production of the song as much as I did the others. Track number 11, last track on the album, Ghost. You know, I really like the way she did this album because this song literally seems like a sequence to the previous song, Young Gods. Because like in that song, right, it seems like she found somebody that she was um, content with. But as the relationship progressed, she realized that this person, uh, the, the soul she connected with is missing. So she writes this song. Oh girl, I, I like I like I like that. I think I think that's how she wrote it. I, I think. But if she did then I like that. I really do. This song was definitely needed after Young Gods because that song was just not my favorite, but this one, you know, I, I really liked the lyrics. I liked the uh, production of the song. I liked the vibe to it. It was pretty dope. I feel like Halsey was like, girl, I got you in the last one. Thank you, girl. Overall, I liked the storytelling of this album. Some songs were follow-ups to others. Uh, the first two songs, I feel like, were about her frustrations with the music industry and how the people in power are men and they try to control what you should be, what you should do, what not to do, and yada yada yada. So initially I thought those two songs were gonna be the theme to the entire album, but nah, she was like, mm-mm girl, I'm not gonna do that to you. And she proceeded to sing about relationships and I feel like she was singing about the progression of the relationship. And in the end, she's like, yo, this person that I've been with, uh, it's no longer there we're not connected anymore. We're not soulmates anymore. If I were to choose between Batlands and Hopeless Fountain Kingdom, I would probably go with her 
most recent album, Hopeless Fountain Kingdom, just because I had so much fun with the productions of the songs. You know, they had some dope ass beats. There was only one song that I didn't vibe to and it was the song with Quavo. I would never forget that song. This one was more of a, um, it felt like a concept album. It felt like a story telling type of album. Um, it's not bad. Lyrically, I liked it. I love how she presented the songs. I love the sequences. It was dope. But for some reason, Hopeless Fountain Kingdom was just super dope. I, I got turned with that one. The only song I complained about in Batlands was Young Gods because I wasn't really vibing to it like that. But other than that, overall, it was a pretty good album. What were some of your favorite songs when you initially heard this album and what songs grew in you as you listen to the album again? And if you had to choose between Hopeless Fountain Kingdom and Batlands, which one would you choose and why? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share. If you have any other recommendations, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll be more than happy to watch or listen and react. In the meantime, I will talk to you later. Bye.